So I was wondering if folks had any questions. So I asked people if they had questions, and they gave me questions. There's a Q&A video. The first few questions are from my Discord server, which you should join. Do that. The first question from Potato Mind. How are you doing? Uh, in all honesty, I'm doing okay. I sort of am out of that honeymoon phase after I quit my retail job where I was just trying to enjoy the fact that I wasn't working in retail anymore. Uh, and now I've gotten, like, I want to put my nose to the grindstone and get some stuff. I don't even know if that's the fucking. I want to get some stuff done. I've been trying to be more productive and it's been a little bit of anxiety, but at the same time, I'm really hopeful for the future with it. The second question is from Burbtha. Why did Constantinople get the works? It's nobody's business but the Turks. Do you have any major projects you plan on doing this year? As of right now, I'm working with a small group of people to get a Minecraft server set up for the community. I know I'm not really known for Minecraft kind of stuff, but I did want to do some sort of like community related thing where we could all like play together more consistently. And I also thought it would be cool to have a Minecraft server themed with Lobotomy Court and Library of Ruina stuff. So that's currently in the works. Hopefully we should have some sort of beta in mid-November, but do not hold me to that. Everyone's volunteering their time and people have their own shit going on. You all know what's going on with the Rona thing. Give us time. Also, I would really like to do a few more story-centric things. The Journey of Rust is something that I do want to pick up again. Asked around and people seem to be interested in seeing more of that, but I also do think that that was one of my like it was a lot more involved in the work that i had to do to get up to it and a lot more editing that i had to do than usual but the result was really nice and i like telling stories my origin on the internet was writing web comics and role playing so that's really one of the biggest things I want to do. There's a reason I've been enjoying tabletop role playing stuff so much. I'm trying not to ignore the video game stuff, but I really do think you should go subscribe to the tabletop channel. Do it, do it. But anyway, uh, I have had comic ideas here and there. I have one that's done. I don't even know if it's still on the internet anymore. Uh, it, it's weird with like, you know, old image hosting sites and whatnot, but I also have had a story in the works for like over a decade now that uh, I need a budget to hire an artist for and I uh, don't have that budget. So that's one of the things I'll hopefully do later down the line if this winds up getting to the point where I can sur both survive off of it and hope to hire other people to help me out with things. What has been the hardest obstacle to overcome? I have dealt with depression and anxiety for all my life, basically. I'm also an Asperger's nerd. That's probably pretty self-infident. A uh, major side of that is that I often feel really listless and unproductive. And so I look back at days when I just sort of like mindlessly played RimWorld for five or six hours. And next thing I know, it's like two in the morning. And I look back at that and I feel like shit. And I look and I say, I wasn't productive at all. I didn't do anything useful that day. And most of the time I'm also like, you're just going to kill this RimWorld save and start over again the next day anyway. Like you always fucking do, you dipshit. And that has been something that eats at the back of my head because I have, I have that sort of self-doubt, a little bit of imposter syndrome already setting in because I've gotten people being like, you inspired me to play Lobcore. I'm just like, I shit posts on the internet. What the fuck? I, I don't, it, it hasn't settled in yet. And I don't think it will for any length of time. Uh, but yeah, those, those sort of like anxieties and that depression and all that kind of stuff eating away at the back of my head every now and then is going to be the biggest hurdle has been and will be going forward probably. Do you enjoy playing games with fans? Yes, I actually do. I really do enjoy playing with fans. It's always been fun. Uh, most of the time it's been like a bunch of the, my greatest friends have been people that found my stream initially, just started doing shit and we start playing games all the time. Uh, hence why you see like Geddes and Rage and such and so many videos and so many streams when I'm doing multiplayer stuff, it's great. But I'm also open to more people joining in. It's just that I've been told that apparently I am intimidating at first. Uh, I, I, I could totally see why, but yeah, I, uh, I, ju I just tend to be the kind of shit poster that screams and stuff all the time, and that's just my personality that is in a show. Uh, you, my family could easily attest to that. It's... 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some games you'd like to try but haven't gotten around to yet, besides Library of Ruina? Just a note, I have played Library of Ruina, but it was like the day after it launched. I did a 12-hour marathon, realized it was spoilery, and sort of put it off until true end. I'm well aware that's changed quite a bit since then. But for unrelated games I'd like to play, basically anything, most anything that Sazine Tatch has reviewed on his channel, I would really like to play. I got into Kenshi partially because of him, uh, but I also really want to get into some of the games that require a lot more like time investment to learn the controls and figure out the game, but tell fantastic stories. Like Dwarf Fortress is definitely one of them. I've tried that one. I haven't been able to wrap my head around the control scheme. Uh, Space Station 13 looks fantastic and I've seen more videos of it and it looks funny as hell and I want to get into that. Uh, I Divine Cybermancy is a separate game, but is also sort of in the same realm of being a little bit weird to figure out, but it looks really cool. More recently, he did a review of Caves of Cud, and that looks really interesting too. Also looks like it has some of the same exact issues. For less convoluted games I'd like to get into, I'd really like to do the original Fallout 1 and 2 and some of the Wasteland games, both the older ones and the newer ones, because I think I sort of need a little bit of that CRPG fix. I think it would be really interesting to get done, but uh, they also require a lot of time. So it's basically time. Time is shit. I hate time. I need a hyperbolic time chamber. Come on, Dragon Ball Z, come to life. If you could have any one thing hardware-wise, what would you choose? As I'm already working on getting an update to my audio setup, because this thing has been acting up recently, uh, I really would, like to get a new GPU for the gaming PC. I would love to transfer the 1080 Ti that I currently have, which is pretty nice, but is actually relatively mild for VR stuff, uh, over to my streaming PC, so it can be used to render videos and run OBS and stuff better. Uh, and meanwhile, I would like to have like a 3080, 3090, or RTX Titan <laughs> for the gaming PC. Legit, if you can get me a 3080, I'll do a playthrough of any fucking game you want. Like, those things are gold bars right now. Holy shit. From Ray, have you ever contemplated about shaving your beard? I've thought of it. I don't really want to. I did it once, uh, sophomore year of high school. It was the second semester. I had a senior that was graduating that I knew from one of my classes. It was like a little bit of an off-kilter class where it wasn't just like algebra or some crap. It was a class where we we're looking into more like social related stuff. And I sort of wanted to do something for him since he really was interested in seeing how it looked. So I shaved and it felt wrong and awful. It just didn't feel right. It felt disgusting. It felt like you haven't showered for two weeks and you're covered in sweat kind of shit on my neck. And I hated that. Also, I have a really sensitive neck due to the Asperger's bullshit. So putting sharp things next to it doesn't really work for me. From Tobias, are you planning on making a RimWorld stream with a Twitch voting system? I have done these before. Uh, I may do it again. I also have a tendency to overmod the shit out of RimWorld and break it to the point that these streams just tend to become technical difficulty streams, so I would really have no plan for it ahead of time. Where did you get Ella? At a local shelter. Basically, she was, they estimated around like eight, seven or eight months old when we got her. This was about three to four years ago, and she was a really hyper dog that was already really big and really strong that was living with like a mother and a bunch of really, really young kids. And you can probably tell from having seen her how she acts that she wouldn't really fit well in that environment. So they sort of gave her up to the shelter and we wound up taking her. So that's, that's her story. She has like a little bald spot of like no hair on her rump. And we don't know where it comes from. They didn't know where it came from, but she doesn't really seem to care. We're, we're assuming maybe like dropped hot water or something. I don't know. We don't know. Are you human? Affirmative. A random guy, and yes, that's actually his username, asked, what's your favorite thing to stream? As of late, honestly, it's been the Mordheim streams. They've been really fun. And while I know it's a very niche audience and a lot of people don't come by those, I, I just enjoy playing Moon Scratchcraft Screaming Barbarian, making all these interesting decisions and trying to stay in character as best as possible, despite out of character knowing that, yeah, maybe I shouldn't run into that room because it's probably trapped, but Mange would anyway, so I'm sort of going to do that. 
DF asked, what's your favorite food? Basically the, Mer the American stereotype. I like hot dogs, I like hamburgers, I like basically deep fried shit and potato stuff. There's really an obvious reason as to why I'm such a fucking fat ass. It especially doesn't help that I don't understand portion control very well. Inzaniac asks, what's your favorite part about streaming full time now? Interacting with the viewers. I will admit, I am a guy who really wants like constant validation. I'm a control freak and I like the feedback. This has been scratching that itch quite well for me. Uh, I try to keep it in line to not get like way overzealous of controlling everything, but it's been fun to play with viewers, to interact with chat, all the dumb memes, even the ones that get out of hand after a while and I sort of have to like cut back on. It's still been fun. Hey, hello. Universal Regret asks, what's your PP size? Cease. What's your setup? I have a two PC setup. One is my gaming PC, one is my streaming PC. If you don't like technical shit, you may want to skip this part, but for my fellow nerds and IT people and people who understand computers relatively, this is gaming specs, and here's what I'm running on the streaming PC. For accessories, I have an Elgato Stream Deck that is connected to the streaming PC for me to do all sorts of shit. I have two Elgato key lights, as you might be able to see the effects of now. I use a Corsair K95 RGB Platinum Mechanical Keyboard. I had to look up the full name of the thing. I have a Razer Death Adder, and I have a little U green USB 3.0 sharing switch. Like, it's a little, you plug the USBs into it, and then two USBs come out, and they can connect to separate PCs, and you click a button, and it swaps it between both PCs, and it's been supremely useful. I have an Xbox 360 controller that I mainly use to spin around the camera and shit like Tomodachi life basically at this point. I rarely use it to play games but for stuff like Dark Souls and such I will. And I have a Valve Index. These are the controllers. I also have full trackers and stuff. But my room, as you can see, is not super big. I have to scooch this bed all the way over and clean everything out in order to actually play VR games. So uh, that is one of two hurdles that are mainly making it hard to play VR games as much as I want. The main one being the fact that my GPU can't maintain a constant like 90 plus frame rate, which is absolutely necessary for me in VR because otherwise I get motion sick. Dan Jnackin asks, why are you? Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Sunstriker asks, what did you play when you played Magic the Gathering? I played Red Green Burn. I would burn everything in my path with red cards and then trample over what was left with a bunch of really big green monsters. I legitimately stopped playing Magic the Gathering after a while though, because playing anything other than drafts, which costed money, generally actually made me legitimately upset because it didn't feel like I had enough control. And I actually got angry, angry, and I didn't like that, so I stopped. Who inspired you to stream? Swiftor, I watched a couple of his YouTube videos forever ago of him like back in 2011 and I really took to it and then I met him at PAX East 2012 basically the following year and joined the game on community which he had at the time which was like a cut it's like for regular old forums discussion and a front page with a bunch of twitch streamers on it built into it. This was back when Justin TV still existed, but shortly before it was shut down. And I got really active in the community, became a game on caster for the community. Like I was accepted after only a month or two. And at the time I did Xbox 360, Call of Duty customs and some other games, but everyone knew me for that being basically a Swifter clone at that point. I quickly grew annoyed with it because it basically became babysitting. People weren't always cooperative and I just sort of eventually scorch earth. Uh, you can find my old Twitch channel here. I actually completely abandoned it and swapped to the new one that I'm on right now, sort of as a means of distancing myself from all the Call of Duty stuff because it was, it was incessant people coming by and being like, when Call of Duty, when I didn't want to play it anymore. Uh, personally, I don't follow Swifter much anymore. A bunch of behind the scenes shit that I don't want to get supremely into in this. I do appreciate him introducing me to this stuff though. I respect him for that. Who are all these characters on your channel banner besides Pippi? I have a lot of other recurring characters that have shown up over the streams in time. And in the banner specifically are <clears throat> the Russian Luchador and Bullrush the PTSD-ridden XCOM soldier. They've been around the channel for years. If you want to know their stories, let me know. I can put them together in another video for you, but they 
are decently long enough at this point that I would sort of want to dedicate separate time to that. What is your most beloved abnormality in lobotomy core? Letitia! Void Dream is a pretty close second, but I really find Letitia adorable. What kind of music do you listen to? I mostly listen to a lot of EDM, dubstep, house, drum and bass, electro swing, all that kind of stuff but I do have an eclectic taste. I jump around a lot and look at different genres. Like I have some Linkin Park and my phone, whatnot here and there. I have like one or two country songs that I do actually like. I like some mild rap songs here and there. It really just depends if I find it sounds nice. But yeah, that's that's basically the majority of it is EDM and upbeat stuff. These next questions come from when I ask people on Twitter. From Shogun, what is the worst game you have ever played? and will you ever stream it? I'm generally really bad with best worst game kind of thing. The only game that really comes to mind for this is Ubisoft's original Watch Dogs because it's the only game I've legitimately like wanted a proper refund for before Steam implemented their refund process. And so I never got that 60 buck back. It, it was just a boring sandbox, stale, buggy and annoying at the time with a boring ass protagonist that I didn't like at all. It was one of those things where it was super blown up by E3 trailers and whatnot and I fell for it. From Javonovix, will you do something special for Halloween? Yes, probably. I'm going to be joining Daita Madachi on the 29th for some Phasmophobia, and I'm going to clean up my room and try and play in VR. Uh, and as for Saturday the 31st, I'll probably do something. I don't know what yet. From Classic, why the name Trisky? Back in the earlier days of Steam, like around when I was like 12 or 13 or somewhere around that, I was in a TF2 community. We actually had a, a couple of servers of our own that we ran and just picked around and I sort of just bounced around with my username a lot. So for a while before then, I was Hunter Kirazaki, which was my fucking roleplay character on Neopets, the dumb part of everyone's childhood. But then I changed it to something like the Scout Man because Scatman John was really popular at the time. It was another recurring trend and whatnot and Scout from TF2, so ha <laughs> ha funny joke. Uh, but one day I just got bored. I said, I want to do a new username. I walked out into my kitchen. I saw a box of Triscuits, which are an American snack Food, they're like salty image. I I was just like, okay. So my username was Trisket for a while. Then I realized it was trademarked by Nabisco. Then it was Trisky with a C for a while. And then I was just like, yeah, this everyone's pronouncing this wrong. So I changed it to a K. Everyone kept pronouncing it wrong, and I just gave up. And that's the story of my username. What got you into video games? I, when I was really young, lived out in a place called Terre Haute, Indiana, which we basically only had the name. Terre Haute on it for the sake of postal codes because we lived in fucking nowhere right next to it basically and it was boring as shit so we had an N64 and a PlayStation and I played lots of battle tanks and other shit and that was back at the time when I could still force my dad to join us to play and my mom to join us to play and whatnot because my parents aren't really huge on video games like my mom is easier to persuade than my dad. My dad doesn't like video games at all. He supports me, but he doesn't want to play them ever, basically. But yeah, I until I was like seven, I lived there. I really enjoyed playing video games. And then we eventually moved out to where I live now. And yeah, I haven't lost the love. Have you ever wished you could unmake one of your OCs or wanted to change anything major about them that would make them really different? This is a minor note, but I lost Bullrush's original first name for some reason. Like I changed it at one point and didn't bother to write down what it originally was. So now she's just Senora Bullrush Salinas. And I, I've sort of tried to flavor it as her not willing to talk about her original name for privacy concerns or some shit because she's paranoid, but that's not actually why she doesn't have a first name. I just don't fucking remember it. But uh, as far as somebody that I would actually want to change the design and look of, Pippi, I would much rather be more original because she is basically just based on that character from that movie because I watched it at one point. I was like, wow, she doesn't give a shit. And I started making her in video games and she sort of just like slowly turned into my mascot somewhat organically. I did animify her a bit, but still, I just sort of wish that her design felt more like I 
came up with it as opposed to I just yanked it from Astrid Lindgren. Lastly, these couple of questions come from the YouTube community section from Cheese Sandwich. How did you come across or meet your editors? Mr. Cake Dragon Man, who did the first five of the Lobotomy Corporation videos before I started editing them myself, and who did a couple other videos like the Rust one, uh, he's a mutual friend of myself and Dai Tomodachi. Dai, at one point, I think retweeted a post of his that he was looking for clients to edit videos for, and at the time I had a, a mild retail budget and I wanted some other help with the YouTube channel, so I was like, sure and I reached out to him. And that's about that story. He's a chill dude. Finn Dragon was basically the only positive outcome of me briefly being in the full screen multi-channel network on YouTube, which I left like years ago. He and I met each other through like, they, they have like a panel and stuff for collaboration with other YouTubers. And so I reached out to him and I said, you wanna make a video and sure. And so there's a Viscera cleanup detail video on my channel. You can probably still find it. Uh, that we did together, and that was one of our first interactions, basically. Otherwise, he's just stuck around. He's been one of my longest viewers for the longest time now. He is absolutely my longest subscriber on Twitch. And more recently, he just sort of offered after I jokingly mentioned it to help me with editing videos. So, yeah. And Marius is another nerd who I met through Lobotomy Core stuff. He, he liked my videos, I guess, or something. I haven't really asked him very specifically, but he came by, started watching the streams and whatnot. And when I still had a retail budget, I commissioned him for a couple of videos after a while because he sort of brought it up. That's basically that. And from Kiramak Hussein, what do you use to edit your videos? I use Vegas 17 Pro. I have been using Vegas for years, but to edit images and whatnot, I use a free graphics program called paint.net. I've been using that even longer. Thank you to all of you who submitted some questions for me to answer. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this and know a bit more about me or not. That's on you. Take care. Watch some other videos as well. Bye-bye! <laughs>